A group of astronauts are celebrating their impending departure on the first journey to Mars by throwing a party with their loved ones in Dickinson, Texas, in the year 2020. While Phil is trying to score with any lady who would pay attention to him, Woody and his wife Terry are pleased that they will be working together. Luke makes an effort to cheer up his son, who isn't particularly happy about his father's extended absence. Even though he arrives a little late, Jim also attends the gathering, and he, Woody, and Luke wind up talking about the mission together. The Mars expedition was originally going to be flown by Jim, who is actually the most skilled pilot among them. However, he had to halt preparations due to his wife's illness, and Luke took over. Jim wishes them success, but Luke feels bad because this was his goal as well. Jim imagines it's Mars and makes a footprint in the sand when no one else is around. The team touched down in Sidonia, Mars 13 months later. A robot that can be controlled remotely explores the globe while using its camera to gather data. A curious bright white object appears suddenly 16 kilometers away, and closer inspection indicates it is not volcanic ash, but rather something more akin to ice. They informed the International Space Station and then began their investigation. Luke explains that this unusual event may be a groundwater flow, while Jim and the rest of the crew watch a video feed from the team on Mars. This suggests that they may have discovered a way to settle on the planet. Returning to the Mars crew, they are approaching the anomalous event, when all of a sudden, they start to hear a low, weird sound, which they initially mistake for interference from the rover. The astronauts activate the radar as they approach the mountain, which reveals the presence of metal throughout the entire mountain. The team chooses to use more radar power to verify the formation once more, but when they do, the signal is cut off, and there is total quiet which causes them great confusion. Unexpectedly, a massive whirlwind starts to build up around the mountain and start chasing the astronauts, as like it understood what it was doing. As boulders fly into the air and collide with humans, the astronauts are caught in the whirlwind as it sucks everything in its path. When the vortex eventually dissipates, it exposes that the enigmatic mountain is actually a massive human face. As a result of this incident, the crew of the space station notices a very strong energy burst and meets to discuss their options. As Woody, Terry, and Phil arrive at the station and learn what transpired, a weak signal from the Mars One mission camp is received, indicating that part of the crew may have survived after all. When the team listens to the distress call, they hear a recording from Luke who, incoherently stating that he is the only survivor, describes what happened to his crew. The message then abruptly ends. The only way to learn what happened and attempt to aid Luke is to send a Mars Two mission to him because it appears that the incident destroyed all the computers, and they are unable to get in touch with him again. As the Saturn research satellite passes through Mars orbit, Phil realizes that it can be reconfigured to explore. Jim announces he has a plan, he's already done the calculations and determined that they can fly off sooner, by reducing the ship's cargo and taking more fuel. Commander Ray reminds out that a launch isn't doable until eight months later. Ray objects to the plan, but Jay argues that it will work because he created the evacuation plan for the Mars mission, and when Jay is supported by Woody, Ray agrees to let them go. Following that, Woody and Ray talk about who will join the squad. Ray opposes Woody's request for Jim to be the copilot, because Jim hasn't been given the all clear to fly, because he skipped the last few psychological tests after losing his wife. Woody, though, persists until Ray agrees. Just as Jim had promised, the Mars 2 takes off without incident, and after a few weeks, they have been on the road for 174 days. Jim destroys Phil's replica of his dream woman's DNA that he made out of candy out of boredom by consuming some of it. Phil now believes that it must be frog DNA. When Woody sees a dust storm approaching the Mars 1 expedition camp at that precise moment, he warns Jim that they must move quickly to go ahead of schedule, or the storm will blanket the entire planet for a full year. Finally receiving data from the satellite, they find that the Mars 1 ship is undamaged, and that there are three burials nearby, suggesting that Luke might still be alive. They see an odd interference on the screen as they check the site's radiation levels, and Woody notes that the earthquake that occurred six months prior couldn't have caused this. Jim is confident that an earthquake was not the cause. Soon after, Ray gives them the go-ahead to land, but not before Jim watches some old films to remember his wife. Since she was certain that there was something incomprehensible on Mars, landing there had actually been her goal. Jim now plans to provide her with the answer she seeks. The astronauts check all systems and proceed procedures one hour before the ship enters Mars orbit. A macrometeoroid shower suddenly strikes the ship, breaking the glass and wounding Phil in the arm, as he enters the essential data on the screen. They also find that the primary system is broken, and that a hole in the ship's hull is allowing pressure to escape. The air pressure continues to drop, which implies there are more holes in the ship, and complete decompression is minutes away. Woody discovers it immediately and fixes it in a matter of seconds. Woody makes the decision to walk outdoors, but it's nearly impossible to locate the damaged place on such a big ship. The team members suddenly get an idea, 
So they open a container of liquid and let it float up, emerging from the hole right away. The pressure on the ship is already too low, and Jim is feeling sick to the point of passing out. Fortunately, Woody closes the hole just in time, and the pressure is able to stabilize. Woody needs to return quickly since the spacecraft is about to launch into orbit. And he wants to check the entire hull to see if there are any remaining marks. Phil then starts the engine and activates the fuel injection system. But sadly, Woody had been accurate in predicting that there is another rupture in the engine's fuel line, causing some fuel to spill into space. The crew starts the countdown, while Phil gets ready to click the start button, while they are still oblivious of the issue. The spacecraft is damaged when the engine starts due to the fuel igniting making the systems unresponsive to instructions, and making it impossible to switch off the engine. The ship has now started to plummet into the atmosphere, which means it will burn up in three minutes. In their panic, the crew learns that Mars One supply module is barely a kilometer away, so they don their spacesuits and attempt to reach it by spacewalk. The supply module isn't where the crew expected it to be since it's moving too quickly once they're outdoors. So Woody decides to use his raquette pack to fly to the module and tie a tether to it. Woody is forced to switch to autonomous flying mode and turn off the propulsion as the fuel runs out soon. He is moving very quickly towards the module, but he is also unable to halt, thus he hits the module. At least he is able to tie down the tether, but he is unable to hold on and continues to tumble towards Mars. He is unable to alter his route of flight as the autonomous system goes down. The others try to go after him right away. But Woody stops them because their jetpacks aren't powerful enough to travel both ways. The rest of the crew then succeeds in gaining access to the module. When Woody attempts to talk Terry out of it, she disconnects her connection because she is so desperate to save her spouse. Woody rushes out to catch the harpoon as she releases it, but he is already too far away, and the cable is just half a meter long. Terry is ready to try again and fly a little closer, but Woody realizes that if she does, she won't be able to get back so he tells her he loves her before taking off his helmet and passing away right away. Jim assists Terry in calming down as she is on the verge of a breakdown. The crew is believed to have perished because the space station stops receiving signals from Mars 2 at that time. However, all of a sudden, they learn that the supply module in orbit has touched down on Mars, and Ray realizes that only Jim could have pulled it off. The remaining crew arrives on Mars a little while later. They search for the first expedition ship after recovering the previous team's national flag and carrying fresh motherboards to replace the damaged ones. They locate the ship with ease and start searching it for information. When Jim enters the greenhouse, he immediately recognizes that someone has been there the entire time because all the equipment is turned on, and the plants are vibrantly alive. Jim is suddenly attacked from behind by Luke, who believes Jim is merely a hallucination, and wants to get rid of it. Jim gets him to calm down by chatting to him about his family, and sharing old stories that remind Luke of happier times. After he regains consciousness, Luke is overcome with joy to learn that his friends are coming to save him, but the situation becomes awkward when they inform him about Woody. Luke is then questioned by the crew about what occurred, but he just repeats that something erupted from the mountain summit and wiped out everyone. Luke thinks that he is the one who must unravel the riddle, since he feels as though he has been picked as the reason why he survived. Luke then leads the team to visit the graves. Luke reveals that the storm has been here for a long time and that it came from the unknown mountain as Jim watches a big storm approaching in the distance that is about to envelop the entire globe. Luke tries to precisely describe the puzzle he needs to solve while the astronauts are forced to return to the ship. The planet's surface has altered over the course of millions of years, but they were unable to see it because of meteor strikes, sandstorms, and lava flows. Luke goes on the computer and plays the sound they first heard, which he believes to be the key to this, while also showing them the mountain that resembles a face. A model of DNA is revealed when Luke connects the groups of unusual noises with a coordinate system as he is waiting to be saved. Luke discovers that the strange sounds are a recurring set of mathematical symbols. Given that the model lacks the final pair of chromosomes, Luke believes it to be a portrait of the being who produced the face, which is not quite human. They are still unsure of what this signifies, though. Jim unintentionally spills Phil's sweets when the crew is going through their supplies, which makes him think of the day they played about with the DNA model. This prompts him to understand that the sounds the face makes, and the DNA model that results from the sounds, are not a portrait but rather a test, and the face is awaiting a response. The first mission's astronauts failed because they didn't add the extra pair of chromosomes to show that they were human, instead, they oriented the radar in the wrong direction, which caused the face to become defensive. Jim offers to find out which tones match the missing chromosomes, because it is now up to them to come up with the correct solution. He wants to capture the cacophony that results, but Phil and Terry are hesitant because they fear making a mistake will result in their deaths just as the earlier crew. Jim, however, persuades them otherwise by reminding them that if they leave without learning the truth, 
their friend's sacrifices were in vain. Luke at least has a plan. They won't get too close to the face, and the recording will be relayed with the remote-controlled camera. The team makes the trip to the mountain and positions the sound source as near as they can to the Martian face. They are startled as an entrance with a brilliant white light emerging from it suddenly appears in their face after the augmented DNA signal has ended. Jim, Terry, and Luke walk to the face under the assumption that it is some kind of invitation while Phil waits on the ship with instructions to depart at the scheduled time, even if they don't return. The entrance closes behind the astronauts as they enter the area with the white walls, cutting off connection with Phil, trapping them inside. The astronauts gently remove their helmets, as they are startled to be able to breathe after Jim notices something on his glove and confirms there is an atmosphere similar to Earth. The team enters an airlock that suddenly opens behind them to discover a dark room with a large three-dimensional representation of the solar system. The secret of how life came to be on Earth is soon revealed to the astronauts by a hologram of a Martian. Mars was once exactly like Earth until a massive asteroid struck it and wiped out the entire ecology. The Martians left for another galaxy, but one ship carried Martian DNA that eventually led to the emergence of life on Earth. This implies that all of humanity was created by Martians. After finishing the story, Jim, Luke Terry, and the Martian hologram join hands around a representation of Earth before the Martian abruptly vanishes and the white circle that replaced it reappear. When Phil and the ship can once again communicate, he informs that the storm is gaining strength and may soon overtake the ship. The team understands they must move quickly since a spacecraft will also launch from the face and the countdown has already started. Jim won't leave, so Terry and Luke hurry to the door. He will continue to explore space aboard the Martian ship as his wife would have liked because this is all genuinely an invitation. Luke and Terry appreciate his choice and bid him farewell before running outside, just before the storm is ready to engulf their spacecraft and shut down communication once more. Phil is impatient and waits as long as he can, but when he doesn't hear back from his buddies, he prepares to go. The trio is able to go safely as a result of Luke and Terry's quick decision to brave the storm and make it to the ship just in time. Jim enters the white circle in the meantime and finds himself in a clear capsule that quickly ascends into the Martian spacecraft. When the capsule begins to fill with water, he couldn't help but panic, but he soon realizes that he can breathe inside. The best memories of his life suddenly come to mind, making him tremendously joyful and prepared for this new adventure. The ship carrying Jim then rises through a pillar of fire that emerges through the entire Martian face transporting him into infinity and beyond. The rest of the crew from their ship notices this and wishes Jim the best. 